Hello. I'll wait a minute or two until your everything comes through. Um, my name's Brian, and I work in the admissions office here at the Puppy School. I'm also an alum. Um, I was here for all four years, and I'm really excited to be hosting this um, sustainability um, squad student leadership panel and welcome back to a bunch of you. I recognize your faces from last week. Um, and so today what we're gonna do is have everyone go around or all of the Putney students go around and introduce themselves what year they are at Putney and we're gonna start off with when they first um, realized they were interested in um, the environment and sustainability and then we have, I have a few more follow-up questions for them, and then we'll open it up to Q&A um, like we did last week. So, James, do you want to start us off? Yeah, um, my name is James. I am a four-year senior. Um, I am from Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and I was kind of surrounded, like I always kind of knew about climate change growing up. Um, I was kind of involved with some, climate activism um, when I was younger, but I really wasn't introduced to um, like any sort of like agriculture aspects or kind of the more like hands-on composting and that sort of thing until I came to Putney. Um, but yeah. Great. Noah, you wanna go next? Sure, I'm Noah. I live in Midcoast, Maine, and I started being interested in environment sustainability. Well, I didn't know I was interested, but I was lucky enough. I grew up on a little small farm homestead, and so um, we had a garden and kind of grew up that being part of my life. Um, and we would compost, we had a compost bowl on our counter we just like bring it outside to the compost pile um so i think when i came to putney um these things are just always on my mind and so i wanted to know how i could become involved awesome and sophie hi i'm sophie um and Hi again to some of you. I recognize some of you, which is fun. Um, I'm a senior and I'm from um, Great Barrington, Massachusetts. And um, I guess similar to everyone, all this kind of environmental and sustainability stuff was kind of part of my life, um, but not in a super formal way. like my family composted and that was like basically it. Um, but I guess I mostly got into it when, uh, once I got to Putney, I saw all these older students um, who were super involved, um, both just within Putney making things happen and like working on improving our composting system and to much wider community stuff like hosting a climate justice conference here a few years ago, which was really cool. So um, I was really inspired by all of them. And then when a lot of them left, I was kind of like, we should keep doing all this stuff. And so um, I decided to get involved um, to try to pick up where they left off. Oh, cool. thanks, Sophie. And Juan Diego? Uh, I'm Juan Diego. Uh, I'm from Mystic, Connecticut. And I've sort of always been interested in sustainability in the environment. Uh, my family used to go on like a lot of hikes and spend a lot of time in nature. And I, and my family has composted for a long time, but I first started to get interested in like actually involved in it when um, I went on a trip to Arizona and I asked somebody where the recycling was and they're like, oh, you're from California or the East Coast, like we don't recycle over here. And I realized that it's not like just a given that like everybody cares about it. 
and it's like really important to be active in it. Awesome, great. Thanks. So let's go in the same order and maybe talk about um, when you started uh, doing sustainability at Putney and what that has looked like for you. Uh, I think I had a similar experience as Sophie um, of like seeing a lot of the upperclassmen um, my freshman year super involved um, and just like wanting to kind of keep up the momentum. Um, I did the afternoon my junior year while we were still at school um, and and I kind of knew that I wanted to um, be in the student leadership position um, just to kind of like hold myself more accountable to really doing more um, at Putney in terms of sustainability. Um, and yeah, so I think that that kind of summarizes my involvement at Putney. James, when you are um, thinking about the seniors being super involved and being inspired by that, what do you, what do you mean? Can you explain what you're seeing a little more? Yeah, um, I think that um, there, I think that I don't know, like Putney's like has really passionate people, um, especially my freshman year. Um, there was a really kind of core group of people that were um, really motivated for um, social justice issues um, and sustainability. And like Sophie was saying, um, they hosted a really like big scale um, climate justice conference that took up like an entire year of work. Um, so I think that was really inspiring to see. So I got my first experience um, working with environmental stuff at Putney was junior, no, sophomore, winter, sometimes sophomore year. We have an afternoon activity where it doesn't mean you hold um, your sustainability coordinator as um, us students on this panel are, um, but it means two times a week um, in the afternoons after class, you meet um, and work on various projects throughout campus, making posters about turning off lights in dorms, um, anything. So I started doing that and then um, going into senior year, um, I decided, similar to James, that I felt like I could do more if I held a position of leadership um, was responsible for more. Um, so I applied to be a coordinator. And now I feel with like the entire year, you can really focus on long-term projects and bring about more change, I feel like. And so um, I've been, I've been working on bringing a speaker in some way to Putney who has um, a national movement on um, how to make a, an environmental constitutional right. So I've been working on that. And um, I also just started working with the dining hall on how to be more sustainable like in this time of COVID. Um, and being a coordinator has given me the ability to like have that time to focus on those things. What, what types of things are you looking at, Noah, for being more sustainable during COVID times? Well, I would say on the whole, um, well, this year has been a major step back in um, how sustainable we can be in the dining hall. Um, they were definitely, we're definitely putting the health community first. So we got back, we're still using all disposable plates and silverware. And so it's paper plates, but it's plastic silverware. And so one of our big things is like trying to get our like reusable utensils back, our glasses possibly. Um, I mean, in an ideal world, the plates and bowls um, 
So I just had a meeting this week about that and kind of hearing what state regulations are. And then I'm going to meet again with some people and we're going to go over and debrief and just kind of try to problem solve and then bring those ideas to um, the head chef and see what he thinks and try to try to make some sort of change. And we're kind of in a, we're not in an all or nothing mindset, like any little bit of change I think is useful. So if it turns out we can use like a hundred glasses and a hundred plates at each meal and not, and then the rest disposal, um, like that's better than nothing in my opinion. So really open to all the options. Um, hopefully we'll come up with some. Oh, thanks Noah. Um, so I, similar to James and Noah, the first time I got involved in sustainability was through the afternoon activity. Um, and so I did that in the spring of my sophomore year. And um, in that place, as Noah said, you can kind of bring your own little projects or there are always long-term larger projects that you can help with in some way. And so the first thing I did there was um, to build a dorm compost with this girl, Anna, who was here a few years ago. And so we worked with uh, some carpentry people at the school and we like constructed this little three bay compost that now the dorms use, which is cool. Um, before that, it had kind of just been like, if a student was motivated, they could find a way to compost in the dorm. So like Noah had just been doing it by choice in our dorm, but there wasn't really a place for all the dorms to um, put food waste. So that was cool. And then going into junior year, I applied to be a sustainability coordinator. And so um, I started that out last year. And the first big thing that we took on, so like last year, a lot of you might remember there was this global climate strike um, in early September. And so we organized a trip to um, go to Brattleboro's, which Brattleboro is kind of like the big town near Putney. Um, and we got, I think about 80 students came, we like made signs and then a few of us spoke at it, which was really cool. Um, and then kind of the big long-term project I've been working on um, for like probably about two-ish years now is, our compost system, which has gone through a lot of different phases. And um, we, I mean, COVID stuff just really changes it all. Cause as Noah was saying, like, we definitely have to prioritize certain sanitation and safety things over um, what we'd ideally like to be doing. So uh, that adds a whole other layer, but in general, um, I've been working with a few people on the farm staff at Putney and then the kitchen staff and maintenance and our chief financial officer person, this guy, Randy, who's nice. Um, we all kind of have been having meetings uh, for about two years now, like basically figuring out what issues our old composting system had that caused forks to wind up in the gardens. Um, and so we're looking at a lot of different aspects of it. One is like, just the functionality of the compost, like we need it to decompose well, we need to be able to use it. One is the social side of getting people in our dining hall to actively choose to put the right things in the right places. And then one is just like choosing the system to uh, do this in. So we actually came up with this really cool, well, we didn't come up with it. We found um, this cool design of this in vessel drum composter, which, um, another school called the North Country School um, had designed and I actually took a field trip to that school. It's in Lake Placid, New York last winter with um, one of the farm managers who was on this project to look at it and we were like super excited about it and we were going to actually basically start building it at the end of last year and have it working by this fall but obviously COVID <laughs> really threw everything off on that. So we're basically back at not square one because we have that idea, but like 
close to the beginning. Um, and where we're at right now is that we're trying to, um, for a temporary solution, just have our compost taken away by a, uh, to a composting facility, which is really not ideal in the sense that we like the idea of having a full circle process happening here and having it involve students and be shown to students. But there's a point where we also just need to really get things moving. And so we're um, gonna hopefully do that for a while. And then my uh, friend Magda, who's also working on this with me, she's in the afternoon activity. And um, we actually just started looking at possible grantors to help fund the um, composter project because the main reason we can't do it anymore is because uh, of COVID stuff affecting budgets for things like that. So that's cool. I've never done anything with grant writing. Um, it's definitely like a big process that I'm not sure how far we'll get with, but we've been looking at some and there's actually like a lot of opportunities out there for things like that. So that's mostly what I'm working on right now. That's awesome. And it's fun to hear the story. Sophie, I was wondering if you could touch on a little bit of how it feels to be going to like Randy, who's our CFO, second in command basically at the Putney School and pitching an idea and, and how do you feel like you're received on equal, you know, playing field or, or how does it feel being a student working with adults and, and trying to come up with this um, idea and program together? Um, yeah, well, it's, it's definitely interesting because I think at most places it wouldn't really um, be put on the students to do something like that. But at the same time, students wouldn't be given much of an opportunity if they did want to be involved. So it's definitely a balance of like, we have freedom. And with that comes like possibly more responsibility than we originally asked for. Um, but it's nice. like all the administrators that I've had to like work with have been like pretty open and helpful. And, um, you know, everyone's genuinely interested in moving in the same direction. So it's challenging, but you also have a lot of, um, people like, uh, on your side with it and helping you plan how to have these conversations and everything. So it's, I think it's valuable and I'm glad I, I mean, the meetings can get annoying, but like uh, overall, I'm really glad for the process that we've had with it. Um, Cause it's kind of unique. Great, thanks. Juan Diego, you wanna talk about what you've done here? Uh, so um, at Putney, I started to get involved in sustainability at the end of, like uh, towards the end of last year, which was, um, my first year at Putney, like once I started to like get settled in, um, I was looking through the leadership positions and um, I saw the sustainability uh, coordinators. And I remembered that in the fall, I was very um, surprised and also disappointed when I learned that the compost system at Putney wasn't actually composting. It was just there to like train people to compost like at that stage because I had thought that it was a fully working composting system when in the in the fall so um, I applied to be a sustainability coordinator to um, get active in sustainability and to help with that and uh, so what I've done um, over these past couple weeks I've been trying to um, find a more sustainable way for um, with, the, with the dorm laundry because we go through a lot of plastic containers and stuff for the detergent and there's um, the thing is with price so I've been talking to people about that and I've also been working on getting more people involved in sustainability for example like hosting weekend events and stuff. Very, very cool. Um, I think, I guess my last question before we open it up and maybe James, I'll have you answer this because um, you have to run here shortly. Um, but anyone could answer as well. I'm just curious about like what, what 
um, what opportunities Putney gives you to um, be involved with sustainability? It sounds like, you know, Sophie's doing the compost. Um, Noah talked about protests, um, but in terms of like, what is what your role is and and how how it's received? Hopefully yeah, not. I think that Putney definitely get, like you can take on a lot of responsibility um, in these systems that are pretty like detailed. And um, I know two years ago, um, one of my friends started cat cataloging all of the food that comes into the KDU, trying to see where we're getting it from, if we can get it from more local sources. Um, and I also was on the board of trustees last year as a student trustee. Um, and I think that Putney as a whole really gives students the opportunities to be involved with these systems. I think that because we are students and we're only here for four years, even though it feels really long when you're here, but you think of like the timeline of an entire school, um, they're definitely, I feel like you kind of have to like realize that like sometimes you won't really see the end of a project. Um, and a lot of what I was doing in um, the, st the sustainability afternoon last year was um, kind of like education and um, planning, like a plan making a guide for the master plan, which is um, kind of Putney's guide for the future in terms of like building things and um, kind of rearranging the campus. Um, which has a really big component of sustainability. Um, so I think that, yeah, you can really get involved. You also can, there are also a ton of like kind of simpler systems, which I think are kind of easier to um, approach. Um, I know in the past two years, I think there's like a soft plastic recycling that's been set up, um, which is kind of a more short, short term project that you can really implement quite quickly, but um, you also have the chance to really change the systems of funding. Great, thank you. So at this point, if you have any questions about um, sustainability and Putney or anything about Putney, we have a great um, group of student panel and you can throw your name into the chat and I'll call on you and then um, you can ask a question and we'll have one of these fine folks answer for you. Um, yeah, and while we're waiting for names to appear, um, does someone wanna talk about kind of the field house and, and that aspect of sustainability and what we're thinking about in terms of uh, a new dorm? I think I might have to be the person to talk about that. Um, yeah, I mean, um, the goal is for the entire campus to be net zero, and net zero is that we're making more energy that we're producing. Um, and it kind of like takes a while to um, take these older buildings, which is a lot of campus, um, and retrofit them so that they have better insulation and um, they're just generally conserving more energy. Um, and so the field house was made, I wanna say in 2009, I think that's correct. Um, but it is like LEED certified and is a really kind of like great example of sustainable architecture. Um, but that kind of is the goal of campus, but it does take a while to, kind of convert the many buildings on campus to that. Awesome, thanks James. Finnegan, you wanna ask your question? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, so I was wondering, cause I really am kind of passionate about climate change. How much time do you guys have that is devoted to, or is open to work about climate change and sustainability? Like what's your time budget around this? Uh, someone who's done the afternoon or? I'm, not, I'm just wondering like how much time do, is there, 
open to be devoted to uh, this yeah. climate change project. I can speak to that. Um, when you take on a leadership position at Putney, um, you're taking on the responsibility to devote time to it. And although we don't like have a specific class block time, um, we meet once a week as a committee to discuss things. And then it's kind of built into what would be your homework time, I would say. Um, and with a lot of these long-term projects that we're working on, you know that you're not getting everything done at once. So I don't know, I might spend varying amounts of time every day. Like I'll send a few emails, like setting up the next meeting. I'll um, record some data or write down some notes from a previous meeting. Um, I think what Putney does really well, along with having strong academics and classes is that it teaches us how to um, be self-motivated and have these long-term projects and long-term goals that we chip away at. Um, where, as I think Sophie mentioned, like we won't, we probably won't see the end in our time here. Um, a lot of us are seniors, um, but just knowing that like, it's also about the process and doing it well. And I think that's a really important life skill. Um, this kind of goes away from the time thing, but it teaches you time management and, and um, how to prioritize things. And um, it's kind of inherent. It's not like a class that you take, but I think it's one of the most important things that Putney has taught me. I don't know if that answers your question. It answers it, actually. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Noah, can you, um, to go on that a little bit, can you touch on, um, like, uh, going to protests and, and at, like, out activism outside of campus and, and how the school responds to those events? Yeah. Um, I think we try really hard as we're up here on this kind of isolated campus it's very easy to become very isolated and like feel like there isn't an outside world so i think we try really hard as a community to stay engaged with what's going on um outside this immediate community and so as sophie said um last fall she and some other students organized um that we could go to the climate strike in brattleboro james right now which he could talk about for a minute, maybe, is um, working with um, the Brattleboro branch of the Sunrise Movement. Um, I'm working with what I mentioned earlier. Um, the organization is called Green Amendment for the Generations, and um, it's through an environmental activist that um, my mom knows um, and has, my mom's actually been working with to kind of create a branch in Maine. Um, so I've kind of learned from what she's been doing and I was at one point interested in kind of bringing that to Vermont and seeing if it was something that we as students could take on. Um, it turns out somebody's already like on the path towards um, a green amendment being passed in Vermont. Um, so that wasn't really necessary, but I still wanted to educate the community about it. So. I'm still in the process of bringing the speaker to kind of talk about her organization and what they do. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, Kaya, am I saying that right? Great. Um, my question for you guys is: um, I saw that one of your one of your goals was to be like a like net zero campus by 2020 and I know COVID has definitely set that back all oh, like the COVID we had had to take um for COVID safety and things like that but I was just wondering what are some of like the biggest steps you would say to become like that you're taking to become a net zero campus 
You're cutting out a little bit there, but my takeaway from your question is what are our biggest steps to become a net zero campus? Is that right? Yeah, that's that's the main part of my question, yeah. Great. James, you want to touch on that maybe quickly? And then, um, sadly, James has to run after this, but being a trustee, a student trustee, I think you have a good handle on it. Yeah, I mean, um, I, yeah, COVID definitely kind of threw, threw a wrench in everything um, in terms of kind of like redoing buildings, which is um, a big thing because yeah, like a lot of buildings are really old, so you can't just immediately switch just because they have like, you know, not the best insulation. And um, but I think one thing that is kind of currently is that um, we have a solar array down by Lower Farm, which is a bit off campus, and um, it actually supplies seventy percent of the energy to Putney. Um, which I think is really crazy. And it's something that like a lot of students don't even know. Um, but yeah, I think that net zero, it's like there are many steps in like each building um, and all the kind of aspects of campus all have to be kind of like working together kind of perfectly almost to have it work. Um, so yeah, I think that um, that's something that is already on campus. Um, but yeah, they're like looking forward to like retrofitting all the buildings, building new dorms that are already kind of like sustainable um, and at zero. Um, yeah, I feel like hopefully that answers the question. Um, but I have to go, but it was great seeing everybody. Thank you for coming. Thanks, James. Um, Briarly? Yeah, um, I have a question about aquaponics because I didn't really see anything about it on the website. I don't know if you guys have an aquaponic system or not, um, but I was wondering, uh, would you guys be open to something to do with aquaponics? Like, is there a place that you could send somebody to research it or even make a system? Does someone want to handle that? Sophie? Um, okay. I honestly don't even know a whole lot about aquaponics. Um, I guess my, yeah, my sustainability uh, career has been kind of limited and focused on compost, but I do know we have this small, basically, I don't know if you know Project Week, but um, it's this time twice a year um, at the end of kind of the uh, winter trimester and then again at the end of the spring where you can dedicate two-ish weeks to basically any kind of project um, as long as you get it approved and you will work with a sponsor on campus but you can also be in contact with professionals off campus or any other mentor you have access to um, and a few years ago these two students, Ethelind and Kai, built this like small scale aquaponics system that now lives in our science building and doesn't, um, it, it doesn't function to like serve us in any way. It basically, there's like a fish tank and then um, the plants filter the fish tank water. Um, <laughs> and so that exists. We don't use anything like that on like a large scale at school, but it definitely, I mean, people are bringing like new ideas for things all the time. Um, people are into like worm composting and stuff, like all kinds of things like that. So, um, yes, in terms of like if that exists here, not really, but are there ways you could do it? Yes. Um, Project Week, and then also like independent classes, uh, which you can design. Um, and then there's teachers who just happen to know and have experience and things like that, um, but also are often able to help connect you to other people or resources that um, either from like other colleagues that they know or other schools um, or that kind of stuff. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Sophie. Um, Isadora? Yeah, hi. Um, I have a question about like clubs and groups and stuff in general, if that's 
That's okay to ask. Okay. Um, so I was wondering, like, how encouraged, like, joining clubs and stuff are and also how easy it is if you're, like, passionate or interested in starting a club or group, like, around a specific topic or social justice issue, like, how that happens. Yeah. Juan Diego, do you want to take the first part of that? Because um, you were new last year and just joined um, and, and how that felt. Um, sure. So um, there's not a specific structure of Putney for clubs, but there are um, there are many opportunities like groups meet during lunch or other things. Or, um, uh, or, or other times, but um, for example, like um, recently, um, like a democratic action group started meeting at lunches. So some, that is a form of, um, of like clubs that could happen. But um, afternoon activities, um, there, I, I don't know if that would classify as clubs. What? Will you talk about um, when you're thinking about joining um, the sustainability squad and, and leadership positions and, and the fair and all of that? Mm -hmm. So um, like about the process of joining them or? Um... Yeah, and just how, was it intimidating? How did it feel? Um, well, in the beginning, it was a little intimidating, but um, you can just um, for the leadership the leadership positions. If you're interested, you can talk to the people in them about them, and um, and it, it was really easy to like get the information to apply to join. And um, mm -hmm. is that the question? Or yeah, Noah, will you touch on um, clubs in general and and informing things yeah so Putney we have a lot of student I think we would call them committees um, so we are the sustainability committee we have a diversity committee um, we have a, a, um, a work committee we have um, uh, two students who who are the head of the like LGBTQ plus um, community here and so there are like formal ways to be involved which is if you're like part of the committee and you take on responsibility of organizing events and like bringing things to the community and then there are informal ways that you can participate as a student so um, many of these committees will host meetings or discussions or films or weekend events um, that you can just decide to go to and take part of and learn about um, some certain issue um, or topic. So we're hosting, sometimes we'll host a film on the weekend about some, like a keynote, we might host um, a keynote speaker talk about um, anti-racism and agriculture, and then we'll hold a discussion afterwards and anyone can come. Um, so that's how you get involved informally. And I think what Brian was speaking to about the fair is every year we have a, we call it the leadership fair. And so all these committees will kind of set up a little table and anyone can walk around and learn about them and what they do and see if it interests them to possibly apply to um, be a part of the committee the next year. Um, we have the admissions committee that Sophie's on and they're a team of students that along with Brian and Michael and other um, admissions folks, they actually are part of the process of reviewing the applications. So they might review your application. Um, and so students are actually a part of that, um, of deciding the next generation of Putney, um, which I think is really cool and a very unique opportunity. Um, and kind of to eat clubs informally, you can always, if you have an idea and something you're passionate about and you have a friend that's passionate about it also, or even, even just yourself. Um, so we can talk more about this, um, but it's really easy to start that up and start meetings. You just set a meeting time. So she started up a political action group and you can talk about that. 
Well, yeah, so um, uh, I guess like two kind of things that we started this fall. One is with me, Noah, and one of our other friends. We've been holding uh, phone banking twice every week um, for Biden. And um, that's been cool, just like getting people involved, giving people a place to put their energy in. Um, and then separately, we um, this other person, Ledley, uh, who's also a senior here, um, and I started this specifically like political action committee slash club slash organization, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we meet twice a week during lunch. And lately, it's all of our work has been focused on um, the election specifically just because that's where we are in time right now and so we um have been doing a lot of like postcard writing and planning for that like assembly announcements things like that um but eventually we want to do broader political action work so um that can look like a lot of different things but um finding ways to get involved outside of the putney community without leaving campus since we're here because of covid but collaborating with people um, and then looking at like the school's government because while it doesn't affect the larger world like there are ways we can make what we do here the most like just uh, possible and just make the best decisions possible so we recently brought back school council which is kind of a forum we uh, that used to happen here that's this weekly meeting it's actually tonight during dinner um, where there are representatives from every leadership group and like basically issues that you have can be brought there or changes you want to see made. Um, and it's like basically the ideal example of like a democratic process because anyone can come and everyone can vote and it's just um, really great. And so we kind of plan to bring that back over the summer and now it's been up and running for a few weeks and it's been really cool so far. Um, so yeah, basically anything you want to start, you can start. When I got here, there was like a tea club and like poetry club and like, uh, like truly anything. Dungeons and Dragons, if you're into that. <laughs> Does that answer your question, Isadora? Yeah, thank you so much. All right, Leo. Uh, okay, so um, I was just wondering, um, this could be an obvious question. This might not make sense, but um, I was wondering how many people usually take part in the committee. Like how many people, uh, you said 80 people went to the protest for the climate strike, which I also did some stuff with, but anywho, uh, how many people usually get involved if you guys start something? I can, uh, sure, say some on that. Other people can add on if you want. Um, I guess it, it, so it really depends on the thing. I mean, to distinguish really quickly, like all the more formal committees, like sustainability, diversity, work committee, admissions, those are all leadership positions. And so the numbers are regulated by um, how those election or selection processes work. And so um, like on sustainability, for example, it's usually two to four students. This year we have four. So that's pretty small. And then admissions is like five and work committees more like eight, um, six to eight. So those numbers are pretty set. Um, in terms of like the climate strike, we really wanted um, as many people to go as possible. So that was a lot of like putting up signs, doing a lot of announcements, telling your friends, kind of getting this building energy because we really wanted the school to be represented and people to really care about it and feel like they had a place to go and get involved um and then like things like uh poetry club which i don't think is really happening this year but in the past would meet like once a week um that kind of thing two students often would just kind of pick up and choose that they want to make that happen and they'd go up at assembly like once a week and be like this week we're like we have a bunch of prompts or we're doing like a group add-on poem or we're writing poems for teachers or something fun and then they'd be like there'll be snacks and then like 
you know, people will show up and then they'll leave halfway and other people will show up and it's that type of thing is usually really informal and it could be as many as like 15 or 20 people sometimes or maybe it'll just be like three. Um, so they're kind of different levels to things. And often if a leadership committee or group is holding a meeting like after dinner or um, there's really a fly in here, <laughs> um, then usually it'll be announced at assembly and so people will know and often a good amount of people will come if like there's a diversity committee meeting after dinner on some larger issue or like something in Putney. Um, usually people will go because things are usually planned when you have free time and so it won't be a conflict and um, yeah I'd say people are usually really interested in going to things. Great, Lydia? Are you with us? Yeah, um, I had a question. I was a little confused, sorry, I know we already talked about this, but I was confused about the composting thing. Um, so like, does this, like, what's the compost thing? Um, like, do you have a compost and like, what's, um, I was confused about what was going on with that. Yeah, so <laughs> I'd say most people here probably are, I mean, like here is in at Putney. Um, we are not currently composting any of the dining hall waste. Um, we are getting back into it in the dorms because that's a separate smaller system and it's easier. Um, and basically our current goal and plan is to start getting our food waste from the KDU, which is our dining hall, um, getting that picked up um, by the same company that picks up our trash and basically they take it on a truck to this composting facility in Western Mass and compost it there on a large conventional scale. Um, and then, yeah, it would be a little sad because it wouldn't be with us anymore, but at least it would be getting composted. So uh, okay. and that would be a temporary solution, but the solution for now. Sophie, can you talk about what we were doing and why that didn't work and then the yeah. end goal with, and let's exclude COVID for right now because this year is just bizarre. Yeah, so what we were doing was um, in the dining hall, we had like this little kind of dish window that you walk past to drop your dish off and you would scrape your food scraps into a bin and um, Basically, that would be collected through kind of a lot of different little processes involving like student work jobs and people in the kitchen. Um, and it was nice because it really had students at each point in it. So like students picking up the food waste, bring it to a holding dumpster. Then people from the farm would come over with a big tractor and uh, basically bring the um, compostable food waste to the barn area which is kind of on the other side of campus and there we have a manure pit um, and it would go in there and then be turned uh, now and then and so there were like three main issues with that system which we had for many years and the first one was that um, basically in this manure pit, it wasn't draining very well. It wasn't getting a lot of air, it was like really wet. And so um, you may have learned in chemistry about anaerobic and aerobic uh, like decomposition. And basically it was not getting enough air. And so it was decomposing without air and therefore just not decomposing well and likely releasing more uh, gases and is even worthwhile to be composting something. Um, and so we weren't getting good compost. Uh, it was like very wet and just not fully decomposed. It likely wasn't reaching a hot enough temperature to decompose. It was just bad all around. Um, and the ideal thing is that we'd like, we have quite a few gardens here, food gardens and just veg, uh, I mean, flower gardens, student gardens, all kinds of things. So we would wanna be using it. Um, and we couldn't really 
partially because it wasn't great and the next problem was that people were just dropping forks and butter wrappers and all kinds of trash in the wrong hole of the disposal line and so a few years ago when you walked by a garden you'd see like bent forks in it um and so that was a whole cultural piece that like we still need to figure out just really how to change people's mindsets and then the last issue was that it was really on the farm staff who already have a lot of work to go in there with the tractor and turn it quite often to make it work so that's why we were looking into this drum composter which is a little hard to explain but basically if you know what a large like culvert pipe that comes into the opening of a river looks like one of those black ridgy pipes it's basically that in a frame and it turns on as you put something in it spits compost out the other end it's really an amazing design <laughs> so like that's the dream great thank you lydia did that help answer your question yeah i would i would say like from my perspective if the general theme is we had a system it was not working ideally and students and faculty wanted to make it better and are pushing to do this other thing and now we're in the middle of covid and weird transitions and needing to use disposable um, waste for sanitary reasons um, and it's kind of exciting because um, sophie's able to help figure out our solution michael did you want to add something in there I did um, and no I just saw your message you need to leave a couple minutes early that's understandable um, so hi everybody I'm Michael I know some of you Amanda and Finnegan um, Searing and Leo and Leo I got to see your cat which is awesome um, it's good to see you all um, I just so I've been at Putney for 13 years and um, I just wanted to it's so cool to hear um, everyone's experience here and thinking about my past experiences. So I was here when students did help design the field house, the net zero field house, and then watched it um, get built. Um, and um, was on a committee to help design the new dorms that we've talked about a little bit, but we haven't built yet. Um, and I just think it's, you've heard this um, from our students, but I just want to echo that, um, that at Putney, we, we don't just include the students in what's happening, but we're like, we literally rely on them to, to make the school function and to make it function well and to um, continue to push us to be better than we were the day before. Um, and the composting is such a good example of something that we want to do better. And yet then we had COVID happen on top of it all. Um, but we, um, we rely on, on the students here at Putney to help push us to be better all the time. Um, and I, I think we, we, do, we also try to support students in whatever it is they wanna do, whether it's a D&D &D club, which one of you said that? It was, I appreciated that because I've watched like five D&D &D clubs come and go over the time here at Putney and I've watched um, chess clubs come and go and um, like Frisbee golf clubs come and go and all of those students that were interested would go to the dean's office or, or find a, a faculty member and say, hey, can we have a little bit of money for some chess boards or could we buy something for Frisbee golf? And the school is usually really good about um, making sure that happens um, for students because we think it's important for um, you guys to, to make your own fun and to find things that are good for you, good for the environment, good for us at Putney, um, and then just things for fun when you wanna just have fun. Um, so those are my thoughts. That's all I wanted to share. Great. We have time for maybe one more question, if anyone has a question. I'll give it just another minute. Um, just so you all know, we have um, two, one more of these next week. So next week, we're going to do one with the work committee. So. Um, learn about work jobs and um, and what that's gonna look like, which is gonna be super cool. And um, Sophie, are you on that one too? <laughs> well, we'll catch Sophie again later on. Um, 
And then the following weekend is going to be another open house, which is gonna be a great event. Um, and we're gonna have stories from students and faculty um, and another opportunity to learn about Putney in a different way. Um, after that, we're gonna have a um, alumni panel, which should be pretty cool. Um, alumni from all different generations. Um, my fellow cabin um, roommate is going to be one of our panelists, which I'm really excited about. I lived in the same cabin that Sophie and Noah lived in currently, which is fun. Um, Briarly? Hi, okay, I have a question about, um, are there internship programs that are offered through the Sustainability Club or any clubs? It's like there's sort of something more like that a little bit? Um, Sophie, do you have an answer for that? Not really. You can take it if you know of anything. Michael, maybe I'll hit you just because you've been here the longest. Yeah, Briarly, ask, I was in the middle of a chat. Ask me that one more time because I want to make sure I answer it correctly. Um, so are there like internship programs um, from the Sustainability Club that are like, connected to the Sustainability Club? Oh, um, there aren't really internships connected to the committees in that way. Um, students sometimes will do um, projects that could potentially take them off campus to do some sort of internship. And then there was also, um, what was the, there was something where students would do something on March break. Sophie, do you remember what that was called? Work term. That's what those words I was looking for. Um, students could do a work term, which could be related to something they're interested in doing um, and usually have them off campus working with um, an organization or to, somehow they get connected to some company or, or org um, to do work off campus. My answer to, to that is in short, we don't have official internships, but there's lots of opportunities to make that happen and work it into your academic life or definitely through Project Week. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, one, like this, an example of that, um, this was also just for Project Week, which is really when you can just get all this stuff done that you want to do. Um, last winter, I went and interned on a biodynamic farm in upstate New York called Hawthorne Valley. Um, and I, kind of knew of it from my childhood because I lived like half an hour away and uh, it's like very connected to Waldorf education, which I, I came from Waldorf school. So I knew of it, but I basically just like contacted the people there and they were like, yeah, we can like give you a place to live for a week. And I just like worked on the farm for a week. So um, that was not through any specific committee or anything, but you can make stuff like that happen pretty easily. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. I want to respect the time, um, but hopefully we'll see you all next week. And I hope you have a wonderful week and weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.